I mean, first of all, I don't have time to teach this Holy Ghost. I mean, first of all, you got to you gotta receive the gift of salvation. Because if you have not yet received it at its value, you will never get what I'm talking about. So, I have this righteousness on earth, which means that I'm in position to use it. I'm at peace with God. I'm legal in the kingdom. So I have the right, when I stand up, I don't have to worry about what you think. I don't have to worry about what I think. I don't have to worry about what I did. I don't have to worry about what you don't know, don't hear me. But what you know, when I stand up and use his name, I know I'm okay and I have the right and the power to do it because of where I stand. Amen. Do you get this in here? If you get this, say amen. amen. You cannot be disqualified if you use his name but by your own self. The only person that is brought to disqualify you is you. Because God has accepted you into love. God made you righteous. And if you begin to use what he gave you, and this is too grown, Lord, I know this is too grown, but I got a preacher that can't turn back now. If I've come too far by faith and I can't turn around right now. I need two or three people to see who's going to believe this. In spite of what people think and how you feel about yourself, you're going to have the power to get up and speak to that devil, and speak to that sickness, and speak to that circumstance. But you're not doing it. Remember the devil to remember what you did? Yeah, but I remember what he did. He went to the cross and justified me. So you have to go back and I'm doing it based on what he did, not what I did. You remember what I did, I'm going to know what he did. And now, devil, get out of my shop. So I have to understand first I have this righteousness. If I'm having to just say amen, you gotta know that you can't disqualify yourself from this, but from your thinking. You have the right to have the backing based on what he has done. You are right now legal with God. Glory to God. Preach it, Paulina. You are legal with God. God's at peace with you. It don't mean your name is. Does not mean the people that your job is. Does not mean the people in your house is. Don't mean your children like you. But God's at peace with you. I just said that for somebody right now. Your child treats you like a dog. I'm talking to somebody right now. Your child acting like they don't care. But that has not that just process. I'm prophesying. Your child acting like they don't care, but you don't care about God. I'm talking to somebody. I'm telling you right now that is only process. That's all it is. Let that child alone. Let them go through the process. Stop trying to control them. You're stunting their growth. Let them go and experience with it. I'm talking to somebody. I'm not feeling the Holy Ghost. Let them go and experience what they need to experience. Let them go. They're in the Lord's hands. As a matter of fact, they messed up because you control them too much. Hey, God, somebody should bring me a tip on that one. That's it. That's what the Holy Ghost. I don't know what you're bringing. That's it. That's what the Holy Ghost. So I understand that. I'm righteous. I love genuine love. See, I love when you can come to church and get talked to like that. You may not like what I'm saying, but you know from the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. You, you might get mad, be a boy that black hair, yeah, all that, but it's still the Holy Ghost. Let that child go. You've been controlling them all your life. They have grown up now. Let them go. Let them make their own decisions. Matter of fact, the reason they're doing it, they're rebelling against you. I'm talking to somebody. Let them They're rebelling against your control. So I have peace with God. Somebody say I'm at peace with God. Somebody say I'm at peace with God. Still smoking a little weed, but I'm at peace with God. Still got great goose, but I'm at peace with God. Still, still going about just six every now and then, but I'm at peace with God. I know this is too great for y'all, but I'm at peace with God. That's why I can use the name of Jesus. When I use his name, I'm using his righteousness. And when I declare the devil sees him, you see me. But the word of truth sees him. When it comes out of my spirit, I feel like preaching. When it comes out of my spirit, the spirit world is you see what's coming out of my spirit. Not what they see in my flesh. Somebody get a bit, somebody get a revelation here. It doesn't matter. When it comes out of my spirit, when it comes out of words, out of my spirit, when it comes out of spiritual substance, the spirit world is responding to who I am in Christ. It is in him that I live and move and have my being. And when I speak to sickness, sickness is not responding to what I drank. They're responding to who I am in him. If I'm happy to hear, say amen. So one thing I have, first of all, is this righteousness. I have peace with God. I'm right with God. I'm legal in the kingdom. What I said, I try to move on him. Because I'm not going to finish it. Isn't that the lowest thing to know? As messed up as you are. God's at peace with you. 
all the hell you have been through and all that bad stuff you have did that you think nobody knows? God still at peace with you? What a loving God we have. That no matter how much man rejects us, in Jesus he gave us a hope, a hope and a chance. He said, Charles will always be at peace with you. I can never get mad with you. I can never get angry with you. I can never reject you. But all you got to do is believe that. I mean, somebody say amen. Isn't that a glorious thing to listen to know that I don't care what how mad you get with me, how mad church folk get, that I'm at peace with God. And he's the one, oh, come on now, and he's the one who's going to keep me anyway. Isn't it a wonderful thing to know that I might have to cuss you out tomorrow and I'm still at peace with him? That's just me. I'm just talking about me. Y'all can look at me crazy all you want. I ain't scared of none of y'all. <laughs> no, I mean, get back. So I'm righteous in him. I'm righteous in him. I'm righteous in him. I ain't scared of y'all. I done been through hell and high water. You know what I'm saying? Me, I'm scared of my the hospital. So I have peace with him. When I use his name, I have peace with him. The second thing I have when I'm using his name, Goethe, is I have his holiness. Mm. What you talking about, preacher? Holiness. I know all of us here, a lot of us here from the old church, and holiness means long dress, and I'm living holy, I don't smell alcohol. I only drink Kool-Aid because switch is too strong. <laughs> Yeah, the soda too strong for me because I'm holy. I gotta drink Kool-Aid. So, so you know, that's the foolishness they tell you. I can't go here because I'm holy. I can't go there because I'm holy. But the, the holiness that he gave me was a, was a separate holiness of choosing me. Amen. To be holy means simply chosen and set apart. Amen. Let me try to side over here. If I'm happy, say amen. amen. When you are holy nation, holiness has nothing to do with clothes or behavior. Holy means sacred to God. Right. This is what right. I'm teaching him. Someone say amen. amen. I'm righteous. This means that I'm right standing with him. That's what I have in Jesus. I'm holy. He chose me. Set me apart. Made me sacred for his use. That's all holiness means. So when I speak to the devil, or when I speak to my sickness, or when I speak to life in the name of Jesus, I'm knowing I'm speaking for him from the position that God chose me so I'm special. I have his righteousness. I'm chosen, I'm sacred, I'm set apart for his personal use. Do you know something? You're a holy nation. Out of all the millions of people in the world, God chose the church folk and set them apart for his personal use. Now let us have the grasp. Because the world makes mock me the church. We make mock me the church and we in church. But look at a big scope of things to you. He said the church of parts, so I'm going to use them. In all this world, I'm going to use them to show my glory. That's what holy means. He set you apart. He chose you. Whether you want to be chosen or not, he chose you and set you apart. Right, right. That means you're sacred. Touch not my anointing to my clock in your hand. That means you're under divine providence, divine protection, divine provision. All that's yours because God chose you. The only downside of that that you call a downside is when he begins to process you, you go through hell. If God, listen, if God will use for glory, he got to pull you out of something. It ain't no way around this, Cornetto. If God chose you and I to be a showpiece for him, it's going to be something going on in your life that you've got to be delivered from. How is he going to get glory unless he delivers you? If you hear me, say amen. So now I'm righteous, I'm legal, I'm holy, chosen, set apart for God's use. So now when I use the name of Jesus, I'm standing in his righteousness. Are y'all getting this? I'm standing in his holiness, which means that I'm qualified because he qualified me, which means that I'm legal because he made me legal. And the next thing I have now is the power of Jesus. I have his righteousness, I have his holiness, now I have the power. I have the Holy Ghost living in me. Let me take two minutes to, and then I'm going to stop this right here. I'm not going to be able to finish this. But I use his name. I'm standing in his righteousness. Does everybody understand what that means? When I use the name of Jesus, I'm in right standing with God because of him. 
I'm not going before my enemy. I'm not laying hands on myself or my family or somebody in church. 